everybody. Thank you all for coming out to our meeting tonight about Ammon Park. Um, we've got a couple of folks joining us on Zoom as well, thanks to everybody who came in person. Um, I'll just run through the agenda real quick. Um, or do you mind advancing the slide? Sorry. So we'll do a couple introductions of ourselves, um, the, the project manager. We'll go over some brief meeting norms, safety overview, and then we'll, I'll hand it off to Andrea to talk about the concept options, the playground style. We'll talk about next steps. We'll do some Q&A in here, and then we've got the boards out in the hallway, so if you wanna take a look at the boards, ask any questions in more detail, um, Andrea, myself, um, we'll be out there, we can, we can, we're happy to, to talk with folks. And for folks online, um, you'll be able to access the Engage page. The concepts are posted there as well, and uh, you can provide your feedback via survey on that Engage platform. Uh, next slide. Uh, real quick, joined by Andrea Ketzel, Senior Landscape Architect. Myself, Jan Rather, Infrastructure Engagement Specialist. I'm in the Mayor's Office, but work closely with Department of Public Works on outreach and engagement on their projects. Um, Paul Scott, newly in the Mayor's Office, is our new Engagement Manager. Um, and then joined by Lauren Tutui, our Digital Engagement Coordinator, also in the, uh, in the Mayor's Office. Um, just some real quick meeting norms. Um, we just want to emphasize everybody's um, physical and psychological safety. We're here to listen, to learn. We want you all to, to learn about the project. Um, you may not agree with everything you see or hear. Um, just ask that you do that respectfully. Um, appreciate differences of opinion that, that you or your neighbors or your community might have. Be open to new ideas as you hear them, and we'll do the same. And then just um, being present so you can take in the information, share with your communities. Hope to get more feedback uh, throughout, throughout the month as well. Go ahead. Um, just real quick safety overview for the building. Um, you all should know where the exits are. Came in one of them, but there's also an exit. If you go out this door, um, it leads to the back of the building. There's a first aid kit in the room adjacent. There's also an AED there if anybody were to need it. Um, Laura happens to be CPR trained if anybody were to need that. And then if an emergency were to arise, I would be the one to call 911. Um, hopefully that doesn't, isn't necessary. And then um, if I were to have a medical emergency, I'd hope one of you would call 911 on my behalf. <laughs> um, all right, we'll go on just for folks on Zoom. Um, we've got a feed with an American Sign Language interpreter that you should be able to pin if you need that. Um, you can also hit the live transcript button um, if you need uh, closed captioning. We just ask that on Zoom you remain muted. Um, raise your hand if you have questions. Laura can read any questions out of the chat. We'll make sure they get asked in the room and we get you an answer. Um, if anybody happens to be on the phone, star six to mute and unmute, star nine to raise and lower your hand. Um, and then after the presentation, um, we're having breakout sessions in the room, but you can do the same providing your feedback online via the Engage PGH platform. So I'm going to hand it off now to uh, Andrea to talk a little bit about the engagement that's already taken place and go over some of the concepts as well. What? Uh, we, we can try, yeah. I'm going to read through most of it. Okay. <laughs> Real quick while they're um, going to try to make that a little bit bigger. My name is Andrea Ketzel. Um, I'm the senior landscape architect for the Department of Public Works. And um, you, can't you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? No. Okay. <laughs> My name is Andrea Ketzel. I'm the senior landscape architect for the Department of Public Works. Um, I oversee our capital projects within the park system uh, in the city. So. Um, I'm here tonight to present uh, a couple options to you uh, based on our, our first community meeting that we had back in August and then some of the online engagement that we collected uh, through the Engage PGH platform that Jan was mentioning. So this first slide is uh, just a, a summary of the engagement feedback that we received so far. 
Um, at our first meeting, we broke out into groups um, for to discuss recreational sports, play spaces, and green space and amenities. And so underneath each of these categories are some of the main takeaways that we got from that feedback. So under recreational sports, we heard to reduce uh, the baseball fields to one field. There's currently two out of Ammon. Um, to add a walking track uh, and tricycle track. To include stormwater management improvements and lighting. Um, to look at opportunities for uh, African American historic class, signage, or art, and to upgrade the basketball courts while trying to reduce fencing. Okay, so under the play space, we heard that folks want to see the equipment and safety surfacing updated. Uh, we recently had to remove the playground, unfortunately, due to some unsafe conditions there. So that's uh, uh, obviously a very high priority. Um, the kids really want to see the spray features added back into the playground, and so we're looking at, at that um, to include all ages and abilities, as well as lighting, shade, um, access to water fountains, and ADA accessibility throughout the playground. Uh, moving on to green space and amenities, uh, most folks wanted to just have a lot of focus on the kids, with the rec center being there, uh, they want the focus of the park to be on the kids. Um, again, another uh, emphasis for water fountains within the park, uh, adding more trash and rece recycling uh, receptacles within the park. Again, another plug for lighting. Um, we were asked to uh, consider including a pavilion and picnic space for people to gather out into the park. Um, look at parking, adding benches and seating, as well as um, stormwater management throughout the park and uh, community gardens. So um, keeping all that uh, feedback in mind, we're going to jump into uh, reviewing two different concepts for the park. So um, this first concept looks at keeping a majority of the amenities in their existing location with uh, the addition of um, some new items. So we'll start on the left of the page with item number one, and that's a, a new addition. It would be a parking lot for approximately, I think I have 50 spaces? Yep. <laughs> 50 spaces uh, for events and uh, some of the tournaments that happen in the park. Um, so that's showing how much space that would take up within the park, and that's eliminating the existing ball field that's there. Um, if you look at down to number two, that's uh, for the pavilion and the um, green space associated with that. So opportunities to have picnics and um, gatherings, parties, things like that within the park. Uh, moving on to sort of the dashed line to the north of the baseball field, uh, we have number three, which is uh, the inclusion of a walking track. So a lot of folks wanted to see uh, or have the ability to walk around the entire park, um, and that's what uh, number three is looking at. Uh, four is uh, improvements to the baseball field, so we would uh, look at improving drainage within the field, adding dugouts, um, bleachers, player benches, and uh, we also received requests to add batting cages in that area as well. Um, number five, sorry. Number five is uh, looking at uh, an ADA connection, which currently does not exist between the basketball courts and the sort of lower level of the park, which includes the baseball field and the playground. So we would look to connect that um, for folks who uh, use a wheelchair or have other uh, mobility challenges. Uh, number six, we would be renovating those existing courts in their current location. So repaving, adding color coding, new basketball hoops, new lighting, um, all of those things to bring the, the courts up to, up to date. Number seven um, is improving the connection between the courts and the uh, expanded playground, which I'll get into in a minute, but that's a stairway connection. 
Um, number eight is what we're calling a concession uh, and restroom building. So that's the existing building on site, but we would be bringing that up to code and making sure that those amenities suit what the community needs for uh, any sort of events or um, sporting events. Number nine is a tricycle track that goes around the playground, so that's for kids to you know, learn to ride their bikes. Parents can also kind of walk around while they're watching their kids, and then that connects into the larger walking track that uh, we included around the baseball field. Um, and then within the playground itself, we have play equipment for ages 2 to 5 and 5 to 12. Um, so we're showing a little bit of age separation so that we're accommodating both ages within the playground space. Uh, this playground also expands into the paved space behind the rec center that currently does not have any programming for it. It's just sort of a multi-use space, so this would be making the playground a bit larger. And then adding back in the spray features that were previously in the park, um, that the kids really want to see added back into the playground. Um, and I think number 12 is just some opportunities for landscaping and then um, the community gardens that were requested as well. Okay, so this is the, the second concept. Um, this is looking at moving some of the, the same amenities that you saw in concept one, but into some different locations. So um, you still have parking for about I think at 40, 40 cars, um, at, shown at, at number one on the screen. And then behind that is the relocated um, basketball courts. So those would be moved from behind the church to sort of behind uh, the back portion of the site and we did receive some good feedback from um, <clears throat> some folks already suggesting that maybe we should flop um, the parking with the basketball courts so that those are all um, so that the courts are closer to the other play amenities within the park so keep that in mind if that's something that you think would work in this situation as well um, again, we're showing with number three, a walking track around the baseball field uh, for, again, those upgrades, same upgrades that I mentioned for concept one uh, would be occurring in this concept for the baseball field. Uh, number five is um, instead of having the basketball courts on that upper level, we would have the playground uh, that would span between two separate levels. So um, we'd have an embankment slide that connects those as well as uh, an ADA connection that's shown in number seven. Um, number eight, again, is the spray features that we were showing in the first concept. Um, nine is the restroom and concession building. And then we're showing the pavilion and green space at number 10, which is a little bit closer to the playground in this concept, um, which is nice for families and, and kids to be able to rent out that space and um, have access to the playground, the field, and uh, potentially the courts as well. Um, number 11 is, again, a, a tricycle track that would go around that space or potential walking space that connects to that larger loop around the park. And then 12 opportunities for landscaping, uh, community gardening, and things like that. Okay, so this, this last slide is really for the kids, and uh, hopefully we can get some uh, online feedback from the kids. Um, I don't know if we have any in person tonight, but um, we want to know which style of playground equipment that they would like to see included in the park. And that just helps us start to select equipment based on what the kids like to see or, or adults as well. Um, so if, if you have kids online or able to visit the Engage page, please go there and give us some feedback on the types of equipment you want to see in the playground. Okay, in terms of next steps, um, I'm just going to review this real quick and then we can get into Q&A. 
Um, so this winter and early spring, we're going to consolidate everyone's feedback into a final concept that will be posted on the Engage PGH uh, website. Um, we'll take that final concept and pull together a proposal um, or scope of work to send out to um, professional uh, services, our, our contracts at the city to pull together construction documents for the project. Um, so once we have a, a designer online, then they can start to pull together the documents that we need to build the, the project. Um, so that takes us to the spring and summer of 2024. We have to meet with all of the RCOs within the Hill District. I think there's four or three I have listed here. Um, and get essentially get their feedback before we move we move on with the project. And so that's that will be scheduled for this coming spring and summer. Um, we also have to go through the Civic Design Commission and uh, those are all opportunities for additional feedback as well. And then one more plug for the Engage PGH website where we'll post updates uh, for the project. Okay, we can open it up to questions. Is there anything? Should we go online first or in person? Any questions in the room? It was very hard to follow. Okay. Couldn't see. And she talks very low, so yeah, I think if your voice carried a little more, I'm probably struggling to see. But I could probably go out there and see. So I really can't. I, I just I was trying to see what was five, what was eight. I can't. Sure. So. Sorry about that. I'm happy to meet with you all uh, in yeah. person at the board. Sorry, I don't know if anybody else talked away, but maybe I need glasses. Maybe. Are you going to share the presentation online with the people who signed them? Okay. Yeah, we'll be sure to share the presentation. We'll post the presentation. The concepts are already there for people to review, but we'll make sure that anything that isn't up there already gets up there. Yeah, question back. I have a couple of things about the buildings and renting, renting some of the areas. Who are you renting from? Who are you renting from? Rent from? Yes, if you want to rent from. So the question in the room is who the pavilions and the concession stands would be rented from? That's from a city park, so if you go to the city parks website, there's permits for renting the shelters on, on that website. Yeah. Good. Yes, I'm sorry. What exactly, what parts of Ammon are you using? The question is what parts of Ammon are we using? Are you talking about the, the park space or? Okay. All the, whatever yeah. you want. I'll let Andrea answer, but in short, all of the park space is being renovated as part of this. Well, the, the field, is the field included? Yes. I thought that was given to another organization. The Josh Gibson, doesn't that, don't they run that field? Josh Gibson Foundation runs programming on the field, but the field still belongs to the city. So there's two fields there, and we're planning to eliminate one of the fields to uh, install the parking and that sort of pavilion space that you saw in some of the concepts. So um, a lot of folks at our first community meeting wanted to see, didn't feel that both of those fields would be utilized and that we would uh, be more successful in cutting back to one field. So yes, that, that is included in the overall um, scope for the project too. Are these changes final? Because like, I heard you say something about the basketball court would probably become a playground. Again, I was trying to follow along and um, parking. So is this final or is this the final changes or no more changes to be done? Yeah, so for folks online who can't, maybe can't hear, the question is whether this is the final, um, final design, final opportunity to provide feedback. Did I summarize that question accurately? Okay. I forgot to repeat the question. Um, so we're showing two different concepts today to get your feedback, and so that's what, what was presented up here, and, and we can go over them again in the hallway, no problem. Um, but we'll consolidate into one final design okay. based on that feedback. Okay. And that final design will get presented again at the development activities meeting. It will also be posted to Engage PGH for feedback as well. 
question. Um, can, can you pull up design two again and walk through uh, some of the play space? I, I kind of don't remember which one was for like younger kids and which one was for older kids and where the spray park is. So can you talk through that again? So the question again for folks online is just pulling back up concept two and showing where the play space is. I'll let Andrea uh, walk folks through that and maybe if you can get close, you can point this up. <laughs> Blocking anyone, am I? Okay. Okay, so the, the question was about uh, just kind of to do another overview of the play space. So um, if you can look at number five here, this kind of purple space, we have two different colors here. One is um, representing ages two to five equipment, and the other one is representing ages uh, five to twelve play equipment. So we have a, a pretty equal spread to make sure that we're covering both age groups um, and kind of all throughout the playground as well. So we're not separating them, but kind of integrating playground equipment throughout. And then the spray features are represented here in, within this circle. Okay, thank you. Sure. Is there a water spray? Yes, I'm sorry. The, when I say spray features, that's what water, those are the, the spray equipment that you think of. I think it would help if you could say what was there before. Okay. Is, is that the original spray or that's, is that replacing it? That's replacing everything new. So I'm going to point to where the existing playground is. It's, it's going to be light to see on the screen here. But the existing playground is right in this area. And there's only one spray feature there. This is proposing to have somewhere between three and five different spray features for the kids to run through. So would that be the old tennis court? Or yeah, that's this, this area here. Mm -hmm. And then up into the uh, old basketball court. Okay, that helps. Sure. Yep, a question here. Yes. Is there a preliminary construction cost for this project? So the question for folks again online is if whether there's a preliminary construction cost. I think that's going to depend on you know some of the features that are selected in terms of what we're designing for. Um, we don't have a cost right now. I would say somewhere between two and four million is is what we're looking at. Was this part of the uh, the penguins deal? Um, is this where the money's coming from, or has that not been settled? Or I mean, I'm just going back to whatever. Yeah, um, so the Penguins have contributed or are committed to contributing a million dollars, I believe, towards the renovation of Ammon. Um, some of that money has already gone towards the Ammon Rec Center, but the other, um, the remaining funds would go toward the, the park. Sorry, and the question was where the funding was coming from, whether the Penguins were involved. Any other questions in the room? Okay, so can you finish where you were? So those other two spots over there, what are they? The ones up top by, by the baseball field yeah. here. Yeah. These? Yeah. So, yeah, the question is what's uh, in the top left corner of the concept two. So right here is number one, that's the, the parking area that I was referencing when we first started. Uh, above that is, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. And above that is the basketball court, so we're, we, we talked about the play equipment taking place of, of that old location. This would move those up to this kind of back corner of the park. So you're chopping the field in half, and you're putting the parking and the basketball court over there? There's currently two fields, so we're eliminating one field and putting the basketball court and parking lot there. Um, I think Andrea explained this to me previously that the two concepts, one is kind of like a improve in place, and that was concept one, and concept two is kind of reimagining the, the entire space, so moving things around. So, you know, if you're outside and you're looking at concept two, that's going to be more like moving things around. Concept one, there'll be more things where are just being replaced and improved in, in the same place where they are currently. Which one is more, I'm sorry, which one costs more? The question in the room is, um, which one costs more? The 
they're both the same amenities that we're proposing for both spaces. I think um, we have to really get into the design of it to know what, what costs more. Uh, I think they're going to be pretty equivalent in the end uh, because we're looking at similar amenities and improvements for the overall park. How long will the project take? I know things are just beginning rolling. Yeah, uh, the question is how long the project will take. So once we we get the feedback from tonight's meeting and, and the online survey, we're going to put out um, that scope of work for it to bring on a designer to do construction documents. That usually takes about a year to complete. And then um, permitting can take another six months or so. And then we would start construction after that. So we're looking at potentially June of 2025 to start construction. That can take another year or so to complete. So, um, oh, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> Overall, it's about two and a half years. Uh, yeah, go ahead. A question online. Can you all talk about the walking path and how does the coal seam trail or any additional nature trails or paths fit into this plan, if at all? And can you talk about what materials will be used for the walking trail? Sure. So the uh, I think we are refer referencing here, if you can see online, that number three, which I'll point out to the folks in the room, it goes this dashed line that goes the whole way around the ball field and connects into the play spaces. Uh, is what's proposed to be the walking paths uh, throughout the park. We don't have materials selected for that yet because we're still in um, a conceptual level of design. Once we get into design, we'll select materials for that. Um, in terms of how that connects to the coal seam trail, um, we're working closely with the URA on the Bedford Dwellings development and uh, our plan is to connect those two spaces with the coal seam trail. Yep, another question. Uh, how do these amenities, or how will these amenities be integrated with access to the pool? The, the question is how the amenities shown in the park would be integrated with access to the pool. That's a really good question. It's also a really big challenge uh, for the site because of safety needed for around the pool, we have to have fencing. I think um, we'll have to work with city parks to see if there's another entrance we could create, maybe towards the back of the pool, work with city park staff uh, to be able to staff that location as well because of ticketing and things like that. So that's, that's definitely something we're thinking about, um, but ha don't have a solution quite yet. Another question. Yep. Yes. Uh, it's going to be critical that you have, when, when we were, just for instance, I'm born and raised in these areas. There was someone always monitoring those areas, especially with the kids. We knew that person in the community. That person knew every child in that community. I, I say that because the playground at Granville it's a city playground. There's no one ever monitoring anything. And I've seen kids by themselves over there in the summer. So there's a lot of equipment and area where you have lots of activity going on. Uh, it's important that somebody is monitoring that. Uh, it would be very helpful, and it would also make sure that the person lives in that community knows the children. Thank you. And we'll, I'll get you an answer in a second. I just want to repeat it again for anybody online. The question was about um, making sure that the, the park is uh, monitored, uh, preferably by somebody who lives in the community, knows the, the children in the community who would be using the playground and the play space. Um, Andrew, I don't know if you want to take a stab at this, but I, I think one of the benefits of you know this being at Ammon Rec Center is that's a extremely programmed space where City Parks has staff during all hours that Ammon Rec Center is open. I know they facilitate some activities out, outside as well. And so there's some of that monitoring built into a facility that, you know, 
resides behind it, behind the rec center. Additionally, with the, the pool being open in the summer, those staff members are there as well. You know, maybe not watching 100%, but they're in the area. They can, you know, keep keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. And I'll let Andrew maybe fill it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but you can assume there has to be someone designated. Right. They have their own programs, and I watch them with those kids. They're focused on that kid and those programs. Mm -hmm. So it does, it absolutely, they're straight kids all the time moving okay. around. Someone has to. Okay. Again, reiterating the need for um, somebody to monitor, and we can certainly um, talk about that as the city and see. Uh, that's like more maybe community volunteer type okay. group rangers, people who actually may not get paid, mm -hmm. but maybe a stipend to be around the park and maybe make sure it's you know clean whatever. Because we know that your maintenance people are not going to come over every day and mm -hmm. pick up trash, and so I think she starts making sure that there are kind of like volunteer park rangers or something. Yeah. That you know, would say, hey, I don't mind being here at the park and making sure everybody's safe. So you know, I don't, just something like that. Okay. So again, the, the, the note was about you know volunteers, uh, community park rangers, or something like that to to help support that. Certainly something we can talk about and explore. Just wanted to piggyback on both of those two points. Um, so it was mentioned about if if in, if. We end up going with this concept about moving a basketball court, kind of flipping it with parking. Um, yeah, if you just think about someone with kids, they wouldn't want them to be that far away. Um, you know, kind of smaller kids, I'll say. Um, but I think also it's probably better to be more integrated, you know, into the site. So maybe flopping those is, is probably a good good idea for multiple reasons. And I agree with the comment about having someone watch them. Um, but uh, I would I would actually promote that they be paid mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just being volunteers. But uh, that's it. Gotcha. So the notes were um, have the person that is monitoring you know be somebody who's paid to do that. Um, and then again, I think we uh, Andrew mentioned this in the presentation, but just another vote for um, flipping the basketball court and the parking so that uh, people can keep an eye on things that are happening at the court at the same time that they're. Uh, watching the playground. Question back here. Um, yeah, just to kind of pick, once again piggyback off of what they were talking about, like, I might have missed this in the beginning, but is there an intention for community engagement or is this just uh, like a plan to put a park here for aesthetic purposes or are, are there plans being done to like utilize the baseball field? And if that's the case, like, are we thinking about things like making that baseball field a turf field? So it's like more appealing. We're bringing people, like we're attracting people to this area. Like, I just didn't know if I missed that. Yeah. So the, the question and the comment were about, I think, some of the programming that would happen in this space, um, specifically around the baseball field, um, and what that might mean for potentially turf fields or other programming in the space. I'll let Andrea take that. Well, thank you. That's a good question. We, uh, Sean isn't here tonight, but he's with uh, Josh Gibson Foundation, and we had met with his, him previously to discuss the ball field and some of the improvements there. He did advocate as well for t a turf field um, for those same reasons, to bring uh, more people to the field, more programming to the field. So that's something that we will, we will explore through the design process. Um, what was the other question you had? Um, just the intentionality with community engagement. Like, I, I wasn't sure if this was like uh, an investment to bring people to this area or if it was an investment to engage the people around the area. I think we certainly want to engage with, with the folks within the Hill District uh, first and foremost since this is, this is uh, yeah, I think a neighborhood that's park. Where the initial question came from from like just having somebody on site to watch as far as like community engagement because of um, just like just our surroundings like just knowing the area and you know what goes on here in the center. So. Well, thank you. Laura is there a question online? No, no just okay. a comment. Okay. Um, Happy to keep answering any you know generic questions here, but we can also go out um, in the hall, um, talk about the board specifically. If anybody wants to look at them more closely, happy to to be there, answer questions. There's sticky notes there if you want to leave comments. 
Um, otherwise, Andrea and myself, we can write them down. We'll make sure that they're incorporated into the, the feedback. Um, but don't, and, and if you have other questions that come up, feel free to ask them there. Feel free to ask them on Engage PGH if you're online. Um, but yeah, thank you all. Well, one other yeah. question. Is it intended that the pavilion will be covered? And um, is it also intended that other sports like uh, kickball or something can be played on a baseball field? So the question is whether the pavilion is covered and whether other sports could also use the baseball field. Yes, the pavilion will be covered. It will have a roof over top of it, so it's able to be used in different weather and have some, some protection that way. The field absolutely can be used for PSL, uh, kickball, different different sports like that. We would, we would want to support that. All right. Um, again, Laura, do you mind just advancing to the Engage PGH slide um, for anybody in the room who wants that link? Otherwise, we'll... One um, question about trees. Uh, yep, go ahead. Can you talk about the trees on in the space? Yep, so the question is, can we talk about the trees in the space? Sure. Um, I guess that's a big question, but I'll try to touch on... Uh, overall trees. So when we start a project like this, we always evaluate trees on site, existing trees, uh, and try to preserve what is healthy and we're able to work around. And then, of course, as part of trying to create shade within a project, we, we typically do plant a number of trees uh, to, to help with those uh, spaces as well. And I encourage everybody to grab water, pizza, um, help yourselves. We have more than enough. And thank you all for coming, listening, and hopefully you all can continue to provide feedback out of the boards or online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.